Hi, everybody. I hope you had a fantastic long weekend. I'm very proud of you for clicking on this video so you can do a science lesson today. That means you're taking charge of your learning and doing your best, and that's really awesome. I hope you're proud of yourself too. Today, we're gonna to talk about plants. Do you think plants have a life cycle? What do you think? So let's remember, all living things have a life cycle. So yes, plants absolutely have a life cycle. Plants grow and develop and change. They make new plants and eventually they die, just like all living things. So here's a quiz for you. Does a ladybug have a life cycle? Yes, it does. How about a banana tree? Yes, it does. A zebra? Yep. A pet cat? Absolutely. People? Mm-hmm. A rosebush? Yes. All living things have a life cycle. So back to plants. All plants start as seeds. To start growing, seeds need water. The first tiny part of the plant is called a sprout. As it gets bigger, we call it a seedling. A seedling is like a little baby plant. Aw, how cute. Eventually, that seedling becomes an adult plant and it becomes as big as the parent plants. Adult plants form flowers or fruits and seeds grow inside those flowers or fruits. The seeds fall off the plant and they can grow into new plants. Plants will eventually die just like all other living things do. Some plants live for only a short time, others live for a very long time, but eventually they all die. But those plants produce seeds so there will still be more plants on earth. An apple tree is a plant and a plant is a living thing. So apple trees have a life cycle. The apple tree seed is called a pip. Once that little pip gets wet, it can begin to grow. And we call that germination. You're gonna learn a lot more about germination next year in third grade. The new baby plant grows roots and a stem. And then that stem turns into a tree trunk which keeps getting bigger every year. The whole plant gets bigger and bigger. It takes about 10 years, but once it is developed enough, that tree will start to grow flowers. Some of those flowers will actually turn into apples. And then there are new little seeds inside the apple. And that will start that life cycle over and over again. Dandelion flowers also go through a life cycle. They don't have fruit on them like an apple tree does, but they still start out as seeds. The seeds fall to the ground and make new little green plants. Then a yellow flower blooms. Eventually, the yellow flower turns white, and we've all seen those. They're a lot of fun to pick and blow those puffy white things all over. Those white things are actually attached to tiny seeds that blow to the ground and can turn into new dandelion plants. Isn't it amazing how every living thing has a life cycle? Now it's your turn. I want you to sketch what you've learned about plant life cycles today. I want you to think about a plant right now, any plant. It could be a tree, a fruit, a vegetable, a flower that you really like. The person in this picture chose to draw carrots. All right, do you have a plant in your mind? In just a moment, I want you to sketch out the life cycle of that plant and try to label each part. You can just spell the best that you can. You can pause this video while you go get paper and some drawing tools and then make your drawing. Are you ready? Okay, pause this video and go do it. Did you do it? 
please share your drawing with someone at home. Now, let's switch back over to the chicken's life cycle that we talked about last week. Remember last week I showed you a website where you can watch 24 chicken eggs that are in an incubator at a college in the state of Nebraska. Last Tuesday on May 19th, I watched while they candled the eggs. That means they shine a bright light on the end of each egg to see if they can look inside and see a developing chick or not. That happened on the seventh day that the eggs were developing in the incubator. Let's watch this video and learn a little about what's happening inside the eggs. Hey everybody, this is the 4-H egg cam, the camera that's on the 24 chicken eggs. Remember they set these a week ago and I showed you a little recording the other day from when they put the eggs in this incubator. And now I'm recording this today on Tuesday, May 19th in the afternoon when the workers there did the candling. Candling is when they take a small light, usually like a flashlight, and they shine it on the airspace on the, ed the fatter end of the egg. And you can shine the light through it and sort of see some of the things inside the eggs, which is really cool. You can see the embryo or the baby chick developing. So I'm going to push play here in a moment and show you a little bit of what they did today. And remember, they're going to do this again next Tuesday at two o'clock in the afternoon on this website. And the man said that next week, you should be able to actually see the chicken's beaks and feet through the eggshell, which is really awesome. So let's take a look and see what we've got here. Those are the eggs in the incubator. All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's the top of the hour here. We're going to get started with handling. And today, we're going to look at two dozen or 24 fertilized eggs. There it is. Today is day seven of development, so seven days after the eggs have been placed in the incubator. So today we are performing handling, where we shine a light. The air cell of the egg is white circle at the top towards the end of my flashlight to check for fertility. And today, in our first egg, we see a bunch of different red lines kind of looking like red spider web in the egg. So we have a developing embryo here. Those red lines resembling that spider web are blood vessels and veins. So this is going to be a winner for one that is uh, developing and growing up inside of the egg. Did you hear that? All those little red spider web looking lines inside, that's inside the eggshell. Those are blood vessels. That's what is carrying the blood around inside the baby chick that is starting to form. So if you can see that after seven days of the egg being in the incubator, that's a clue that the egg, the chick is developing and it has those blood vessels. That's amazing. And at this stage of development, certain structures are able to See the eye? I pour the channel here towards the my pointer finger. If I rotate it ever so slightly, you're able to see that. That our black structure is the eye. Wow. Here comes the second egg. Here we have our second egg. Looks pretty similar to our first one here. We see those red blood vessels and veins toward the top end of the egg or the air cell. So now we can recognize there is a developing embryo on the inside of this egg. And as we look at the eggs, we'll be able to see the pores of all the eggshells. So those are going to be all tiny 
a little mini sized hole covering the shell of the So those are called pores, those little speckles all over the egg. You can't really see it when you're not handling the egg, but those pores allow a little bit of air to flow in and out of the eggshell so that the baby chick can breathe. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. He keeps calling it a winner if he sees those blood vessels because that tells him that the egg is good and the chick is developing. And you keep seeing as I skip forward, there are all kinds of blood vessels in these eggs. So they are all good. There was one, see, I think. This is egg number nine, and this is cool. There's some movement. You see the shadow toward the top of the light where it's getting darker? Um, that's all black dye. Oh, the eye. That's a baby chicken eye. Did you see it move? There's a baby chick in there and it's still two weeks away from being able to hatch, but it's starting to move around. You can actually see it. I think that is so cool. All right. This is another one. This one you can see like really well. Look at all the blood vessels. I wonder if that darker shadow at the other end is the yolk. It's food, remember? All right, we'll stop here. That went on for quite a while. Pretty awesome to see. And at the end, like I said, the workers said that next Tuesday, when they do this again, you may be able to see some of the chicks' feet and beaks, which I think would be really special. So maybe try to check this link out next Tuesday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on May 26th. And I'm also going to try to record it for you. Wasn't that awesome? If you would like to watch that happen again on a live, they will show it today at two o'clock in the afternoon. I will also try to record it, like I said, and show you in your science lesson this Friday. Today is actually the 13th day that the eggs have been developing. Let's look at this list again and find day 13 to see exactly what's happening to inside those eggs. Do you see day 13 on the list? It's days 12 and 13. Now look, tomorrow, day 14, the soft downy feathers will cover most of the chicks' bodies. Then by the end of this week, all the chicks will move their heads under their wings into the pipping position, which means they'll be ready to break out of the shell very soon. Most of that liquid white albumin will also have soaked up into the developing chick. On Friday, we'll go over what happens in the last few days that the chick is inside the egg. We're getting really close to hatching days. We're gonna finish today's lesson with this absolutely amazing video of a developing chick inside an egg. Make sure you notice the little box on the left side where it tells you what day it is for the egg. 
when you get to days 13 and 14, remember that's basically what's happening right now inside the eggs we've been watching. You might wanna press pause or even back this video up if you miss anything and want to rewatch it. When you're all done, go check out the other links that your teacher shared with you. One is a link to a webcam so you can watch the eggs in the incubator too. The other link is another video and it's one where you can watch the chick actually break out of the egg. Enjoy friends.